Thanks for tuning into this podcast. Uh, this is my, my second podcast um, when it comes to uh, having some writing techniques and having some things for everyone to think about. And I, I appreciate you uh, taking the time to listen to this, however much time it ends up being, 10 or 12 minutes. And uh, I realize time is very, very precious. Uh, so guess what? I'm just going to dive right into it. Today's topic is different writer, different technique. Um, are there, do, do I teach different things, different techniques to different writers? And uh, should, should that happen? And the bottom line is no, it's, it's the same technique. Uh, I teach the same technique to, to every writer. It's just the degree of application changes. And uh, let, me, let me dive into that. So I, where my techniques come from is, is literally what the best in the world are doing, right? So if I, I look at a, a Marquez or Rossi, um, uh, any any of those top riders, even a, you know a Sykes, uh, uh, a Josh Hayes, uh, you know JD Beach, what are they doing and why? If there was a better way, they they would do it, and that transfers over to to anybody that is beginning to ride a motorcycle to to a street rider as well. We want something that gets better as we go quicker. We want something that gets better as our as as our risk level goes up, and. What it, what it affords us is, is consistency and adjustability. So for, for riders, I'm teaching the same technique, just the degree of application changes for that technique. So if I have a rider, never even straddled a motorcycle before, and I put them on, and I've had a lot of riders like that, put them on the bike, how I get them to initially use the controls is the exact same way that I'm, gonna, I'm going to have even a world-class rider look at how they're going to use the controls and how they're going to use their eyes. Because we want something that, that again, gets better and allows us to adjust for the situation. So a lot of those initial inputs end up being identically the same. What we do after that with those, with those techniques will change based on, we'll, we'll, the degree of application will change based on their circumstance. But we're going to teach them the exact same thing. And those, those fundamentals are what the best in the world are doing. And uh, I, I think that's a point that's just not stated enough. I'll give you a couple, some, some, some of great examples of that is uh, I've got a great peer group that I work with. One of the guys in my peer group uh, is J.D. Patinsky. And J.D. Patinsky is a, a former Green Beret Delta Force guy. Uh, he now te- uh, owns a company called Northern Red. Northern Red is the number one tactical uh, training um, company in the U.S., and JD's into motorcycles and he's completely in the sport and there's an amazing amount of parallels between what he does and, and what I do. And JD gets a lot of the same phone calls that I get. Uh, JD will get a phone call from a guy and he'll say, I want to train with the Delta Force Green Beret guys, right? Because there has to be some, some secret. There has to be something, you know, at the top of the level of the sport. And when, when we talked about uh, this podcast that I was going to do and, and some of the other ones I'm going to do, GD and I both a little bit of a chuckle, which was that, you know, they're just better at the fundamentals than, than you are. It's, it's the same technique, just the degree of application changes. They're better at the fundamentals. They're more precise with them. They're able, they're able to use them better. And we'll talk about why in just a second. So, there, yeah, the, the silver bullets, the hidden gems of our sport, it's in the fundamentals. And those fundamentals come from, from the best in the world. And what that, what that really leads to is consistency and predictability. It's a report card. It, it knows, so you know what you're doing when, and that's what allows you to adjust. And if you, if you start to develop this, if you go to the brakes the same way and your bike reacts differently, then you know it could be an issue with your bike. Or... Um, if, if you're trying to get to get to the apex, that apex becomes your report card. And if you're doing the same actions, then you know that there's something going on with the bike or the track or your grip level. So that's why having that consistency and predictability is, allow, is what allows you to adjust. And you can also be more precise with, with your technique. And as a magazine tester, that was always a real, uh, is a big deal. Uh, when I started testing for, for magazines, uh, I kind of thought I was a little bit old for it. And uh, especially the last, uh, the last few ones that I did, I, I, I wrote against guys um, that literally had, had basically I had three other people there. They all had won AMA Nationals. And of course, you know, who was I? Some old guy. And what, what we're looking for, what they're looking for is somebody that um, 
had consistent actions and was predictable so they could properly judge what the motorcycle does. If you go to the brakes differently every time, if you go to the throttle differently every time, then you're really not sure what the, if it's the, you or the motorcycle. But as a professional, and professionals are predictable, if you are predictable and consistent with your actions, then you can tell it's what the motorcycle is doing and then you can have a very accurate account of what that bike is doing. So it builds consistency. And again, you can start to be more precise with your, with your actions then if, if, if your technique becomes more fine. So those fundamentals are a bigger deal than you think. And, and as, a, as a rider that's going to the world championships or a rider that's just starting out, having that, that same technique is, is just a, is a big deal. We're not changing the language. I'm not, I'm not having a new rider say, oh, I'm gonna start you off as a new rider. But then when you get to this level, I, we're, we're going to teach you something completely different. It's a whole other new technique. Or, oh, you're going to the world championship level? Oh, oh my gosh, okay, now I really got to show you what's going on. Uh-uh. It's just, it's just this, it's the same technique, just the degree of application changes. So having worked with J.D. Beach last year, working with Josh Heron now, working with some of these other, these other um, insanely fast riders, it's, it's how good they are at those fundamentals and how precise they are with them. You watch J.D. Beach from the Decoin short track. Uh, he was better at his getting his bike slowed and pointed than everybody else, right? So he realized that there's a place where the bike has to be slowed and pointed. He was better at it than everybody else. He was respectful. He was consistent and predictable with it. And then he could make some slight adjustments with his entry or his entry line to get the bike stood up and, and, and driving later because you know part of that part of those big fundamentals is is uh, you know what lasts longest in the sport and, and we want to have report cards for that which is our apexes and how soon that we have our exit direction so that consistently consistency and predictability huge deal look at Rossi Rossi before he gets on his bike walks up to it kneels puts his plan into place he's consistent and predictable with that. And that's what allows them that, that adjustment as well. Look at, look at data acquisition systems for the people that have data acquisition. You zero your data acquisition before you go out and ride. The, the thing is zeroed out so we can have consistent and predictable information. It's the same thing with, with your actions. So that, those techniques, developing those techniques for the same rider and just making those fundamentals more precise, that's exactly what we're looking for. And the next step to that is you build muscle memory for those actions. So as you build muscle memory for those actions, it leaves room in your brain for something else. So as those actions become essentially pre-made, they're pre-made, they're self-conscious, then you're, you've got room in your brain for something else. When, when you first get into this, it's so overwhelming. There's so, there's so much information. And if you work with me, and, and uh, you, you'll see that we'll work on one thing at 100%. Uh, but sometimes we'll work on a couple things, but for the most part, we'll work on one thing at 100%. If you want a 100% result from something, you need to work on that one thing at 100%. Working on 10 things at 10% is, is pretty much a recipe for, for failure. So we'll work on one thing at 100% to get that 100% action. Another great analogy with that is when, when I was talking to JD, about this, we, we, we basically have so many parallels between what we do. And one of the parallels was how somebody takes their, their weapon out of their holster. And uh, JD says, um, how I draw my weapon is the same every single time. Every single time I draw my weapon, regardless of what I'm doing, it's the same action. He goes, because if it's the same action, then I, I, my, that could become mus becomes muscle memory, becomes pre-made, so then all I have to do is worry about the situation that unfolds in front of me. It's the same way with the way you go to the break. If you go to the break the same way, and you go to the break at that first, first 5%, then that becomes an automatic pre-made thing where then now you're ready to adjust for the different situation. So the more that you can make these things muscle memory, the more that you make them pre-made, the room, it allows you more room to be more precise with, with those, actu those particular actions or new actions that are coming out to you. So how do you start to be able to do that? And how do you do that kind of off the bike? Because here we are, it's off season and everybody kind of wants to start working on some things. 
And we don't get we actually don't get a chance to ride our motorcycle very often. Um, when you go to a track day or even on a race weekend, you look at the amount of time you're on your bike is is very very little. But yet we're we're put in a position to do something very dangerous in a very short amount of time. So getting our brain trained uh, in the off season, we have some things that can that can really help out with that. And one is well, I'll give you an example. So I started yoga um, this a uh, few, uh, few months ago and. As of last night, I've been to 39 yoga classes, 39 90-minute yoga classes, and I think that's 57 hours or something along that lines of, uh, of yoga. We don't get to ride our motorcycle for 57 hours. It would take me uh, a lot of days, it'd take me 20 days or something along those lines or, or whatever it is to, to ride that many hours. So starting to get some things done in the off-season and uh, to, to be able to develop those things would be a pretty big deal. And... If, if you can think about when you're driving your car, how do you go to the brakes? How you release the brakes? How you use your eyes? As you turn on the off-ramp, where's my apex? Where would my apex be? Can I take away steering wheel angle from that? As I ride my bicycle, if I'm you're riding bicycle or you're playing golf, right? How, how's your initial grip? How's your initial grip with your, with your golf club? As you're uh, going to mow the lawn, right? How precise are you with, with these things? As, and so think about those things and start getting your brain engaged uh, on those actions, and it'll shortcut that amount of time uh, that when you jump on your motorcycle, it doesn't completely, completely overwhelm you. So I think that there's some, there's some fun things uh, for you guys to be able to, to take away from that and be able to work on the off-season so your brain's not completely freaked out uh, when, you, when you go to ride. So different rider, different technique. Um, no, no, it's, it's, the same, it's the same technique, just a different degree of application. And realize that as, as you start to build some muscle memory for those things, then your actions are going to be able to be more precise with them, right? Working on those, those fundamentals. And I think part of the difference as well, when you look at, because um, there is a lot of other information out there, I understand that, you have to realize, well, look, look where that information is coming from. And, and again, that's why we're going to, to work on what the best in the world do. And I said that in some of my other podcasts, is I learned that lesson very early on from, from world champions and realized I want to have the habits that they have and I want to have the techniques that, that they have that allows me to, to get better as my speed comes up and as that, as that risk level comes up. So thank you for listening. I, uh, I appreciate that. Uh, if, you, if you have some, uh, I've got actually a pretty good list of uh, some more podcasts to do. Uh, and uh, we'll get those going. But if you have anything, send me an email, cagecoaching at gmail, and uh, I'll certainly uh, take a look about putting those podcasts into action as well. Thanks so much.